this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. And will you make any uh, uh, IRAP advisory board member resign who is currently involved with SDTC in order to ensure we don't have the same level of corruption happen under your leadership that's happened under the Liberal leadership of Minister Champagne, that that does not continue? So, Mr. Chair, as uh, I believe my colleague had mentioned, our, our uh, current IRAP advisory board, uh, to our knowledge, doesn't have anyone that's involved in this uh, topic or circumstances. I asked if they do, will you make sure they're off the board? Mr. Chair, we, we want all of our advisory uh, uh, committee members to uh, be people that, uh, you know, obviously are there and serve in the public trust and maintain the confidence on... means not double-dipping like nine directors, the Auditor General identified. Mr. Chair, with that, because of this testimony, of testimony received earlier, I'd like to move the following motion. Uh, and we've given it to the clerk if the clerk wants to distribute it. Why don't you read it? First, then, Mr. Perkins, we'll just double check that it is in fact the same. Okay, before um, sending it around. That, as part of the committee's ongoing study of sustainable development and technology, Canada SDTC, the committee agrees to a extend its current study of the Auditor General report by inviting the following additional witnesses. These are in addition to the study that we have ongoing now in the list of outstanding witnesses. So, the new additional witnesses, given the testimony. Uh, uh, John Newbley, the former Deputy Minister of ICED, where a lot of this happened. Uh, Casey Doyle, Acting Board Member of SDTC. Martha Morgan, Acti Acting Board Member of SDTC. Stephen Gilbo, Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. I'll explain to him why him in a few minutes. Andre Lise Mateau, founder of Cycle Capital and a former member of SDTC board. Stephen Kakucha, former board member of SDTC. Guy Met, former board member of SDTC. And Annette Vacherian, former chair of SDTC. And that B, the committee report to the House that it asks the Auditor General to undertake a value for money and performance audit on the work done by SDTC since January 1st. 2017. Just hold there. I'm going to suspend just for a second. I just, and I, I'm going to first endeavor to get this out to all members. So just hold on a second. So briefly, we have an existing uh, motion with continuing studies that I know there are a number of witnesses that the clerk has been trying to get before the committee. But in light of uh, the testimony today and some of their earlier testimony, <laughs> perhaps, Mr. Chair, I could briefly explain why the addition of these folks. Um, John Newbley, the former Deputy Minister, he was there, as most know, Simon Kennedy, I think, has been the Deputy Minister there for only about a year, but most of what has happened under SDTC's term, including the appointment of uh, some of these directors that were brought out in the Auditor General's report, was under Mr. Uh, Newbley's tenure as Deputy, and he, uh, he was involved very much in the discussions of what was called managed conflicts between uh, the former uh, president of SDTC, Leah Lawrence, and the government in seeking out a chair replacement. Uh, I think we've had a lot of testimony today already about uh, the clarification that the witnesses have given us about their current role and responsibility versus that of the acting board that the minister appointed. Our current existing study motion has the current acting chair of that on the list, but it did not have either Casey Doyle or Martha Morgan, who are the other two that the minister appointed, so I believe they should also appear. Stephen Gibo, uh, the Minister of Environment, uh, in his public disclosure, continues to hold shares in uh, one of the largest recipients of, uh, of funds from uh, the Green, Liberal Green Slush Fund. Uh, Cap Cycle Capitals received over 200 million dollars, and Stephen Gibo not only worked there before being elected, but was uh, still owned shares in his public disclosure and is benefiting from the, uh, the investment by SDTC in Cycle Capital's businesses. Andre Lise Mateau was his boss at Cycle Capital and is the founder there. And again, she has received, as I said, her company since its inception over $200 million of green slush fund money. Stephen Kukucha, 
and Guy Umet, both were directors of SDTC, who also had conflict of interest uh, uh, pointed out by the Auditor General in terms of funds that went to companies they had interests in. Uh, in fact, the Ethics Commissioner report mentions Guy Umet, but doesn't actually proclaim anything about him, um, even though it's clear from the evidence that he voted in favor of $4 million for his own company. And Annette Vacheron, who we all know is the chair of SDTC, who uh, was appointed and knowing that she had been doing business with SDTC and that set a culture of uh, conflict. And that culture of conflict, as we know, is 196 of a little over 226 projects the Auditor General looked at were actually projects that had some sort of conflict of interest uh, declaration and therefore um, therefore set the tone when she joined about the issue of uh, it being okay to just leave the room when 82% of the transactions being approved by the border to conflicts. That is clearly goes way beyond just bad legal advice. And on B, because the Auditor General only did a selection of the projects and did not look at the full $800 million that was given out in that audit period of the 2.1, sorry, $832 million that was given out out of the $2.1 billion that the Green Slush Fund has given out since the, its inception. Uh, we are asking that the Auditor General do a full audit of everything because we believe we've only scratched the surface with his random sampling. Where I left off was the rationale for the individuals and the reasons this is of concern and today was actually with the NRC was quite disturbing as well because it appears that the new SDTC is still the old SDTC in the sense that uh, it is still independent reporting to the uh, minister and still uh, through a different board of three different people, but with the same management and uh, no evidence of real change, which is why uh, we wanted to have the NRC here today to get a sense from them about how they were going or to run it and whether they have been running it and what have they been doing to prevent the uh, the challenges that SDTC has that were identified by both the Ethics Commissioner and the Auditor General. Yet, uh, yet today we see that that process hasn't even started yet. It's still the same old green slush fund, uh, which uh, gave out, uh, uh, had 196, sorry, 186 votes in, uh, out, of, uh, out of about 400 uh, which were conflicted, uh, according to the Auditor General. Now, the Auditor General said there were over 400 votes, but the Auditor General didn't actually go through all of those votes. The Auditor General went through a small sample size of 226. And of that 226, 186 were conflicted. 186 of 226, 82 percent of what went before this board were conflicted payments to companies that those same directors had an interest in. There's quite a list of some of them that the Auditor General had, had given us in addition to uh, what was in the report. And so it seems that every time uh, we have a witness or have a report by a, an officer of parliament, it on covers more and more. And not, not that this is all of it, because as we know, the House of Commons voted for a production of documents order on the Liberal Green Slush Fund. And that production of documents order um, re required every government department, SDTC, to turn over their documents to the law clerk of the House of Commons so that the law clerk could turn those over to the RCMP. And we now know from letters received before this committee that the law clerk has written to the speaker informing the speaker that the prime minister's own department, the PCO, gave direction, gave direction to all government departments to actually redact elements 
of any documents they have using the Access to Information Act and Privacy Act changes. Although he points out in that letter that there was no such restriction put in the House of Commons motion that passed with the majority members in the House of Commons that the House of Commons motion is supreme on this. It's not restricted by any act of Parliament, yet the Prime Minister's office clearly interfered through the PCO in trying to prevent the information from getting out. And that's why the, this committee, the Public Accounts Committee, which examines the Auditor General reports on the expenditures of money, needs to uh, have an expanded uh, uh, study on the Liberal Green Slush Fund because we know that where there's smoke, there's fire, and there's probably a lot more going on here than the 226 projects the Auditor General looked at out of the billion-dollar Liberal Green Slush Fund. So as a result of that, we, we need to ask these directors who are involved in the current transition, as well as those who are named in the Auditor General's report, uh, for more clarity before this committee. And we need to ask that the Auditor General herself do a more extensive study of what's been going on in the Liberal Green Slush Fund than she did in her selective uh, sampling, a uh, random sampling of projects. Uh, so I would hope that all committee members will support uh, that we get to the bottom of this because right now we don't know if anything's changed. Uh, the NRC doesn't know if anything's changed, contrary to what the minister said. The minister said, as of the date, the NRC has control and it will be up to this pristine level of accountability, yet the minister himself has not met once, not met once, with anyone in the NRC to figure out how the heck this thing's going to get cleaned up. So the 40 months that Minister Champagne was the minister during SDTC, that he did nothing while an ADM sat in every meeting where this happened that reports to him through the deputy, he did nothing until it made it into the media. He did nothing through all the parliamentary hearings. And his only response has been, I'm going to transfer it to the NRC. That'll clean it all up. And he cares so much about it, he hasn't even met with the NRC to see what they're doing and to give direction. And neither has his staff. So uh, I think it's essential that this, this committee keep uh, examining the issue to get to the bottom of these issues that have been raised today, but also by the Auditor General and the Ethics Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Perkins. I have Ms. Khalid. You have the floor. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Chair. I'm not really sure why uh, the Conservatives are so hell-bent on politicizing a process. I, you know, if we go through the timeline here, the Minister uh, for SDTC, responsible for SDTC, identified an issue, acted on it, read the report of the Auditor General, which is uh, at an arm's length uh, person who provides the oversight of our public accounts, of how taxpayers' money is spent, took in their recommendations, and took some substantial steps on how to fix the process. We had witnesses here today uh, from the NRC, and they talked about what that transition looks like. They talked about what the impact of a program like this is on small businesses. They talked about how we are going to improve the, the system. And that is exactly what our role is here uh, as members of the Public Accounts Committee. Our role is not that of a judiciary. Our role is to find issues and challenges, to take the advice and the recommendations of the Auditor General and others, and to, to help in improving the process, to ask the, the relevant questions on, on what is next. So I'm not sure why 
you know, the members opposite feel that, oh, you know, if there's smoke, there's fire, let's, let's go on this witch hunt expedition, etc. Let's bring in everybody. Let's, let's basically demolish public trust by calling again and again and again same witnesses. And I get, people have been on record. The Auditor General herself has felt and she has expressed as much um, how uncomfortable she feels by people telling her how to do her job. And the member opposite spoke about, you know, getting her to, to do her job even more. Well, I think that her and her office are arm's length. They are doing their job. They just released this report. And we don't need to dictate to them how to, how to conduct themselves. What, what we're seeing here, uh, Mr. Chair, is an exercise in a fishing expedition on the back of industry and of small businesses. It's unfortunate. I have sat in committees over these past number of years, and I have seen again and again businesses being brought in, put in through the ringer to the point where they become targets. And I don't think that that's fair, and I don't think that that's the job of what this committee is responsible for. I think that, sure, if, uh, if we are going to proceed with this motion, that there are some amendments that need to be made here. And we should be focusing on, on ensuring that we are doing the right thing in order to improve the process, as opposed to creating a witch hunt process in which we're hauling in anybody and everybody who the conservatives seem to think are enemy number one, anything to, 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 to get uh, an extra click, anything to raise an extra buck for, for their party. It's unfortunate. So I, I would like to amend this motion based on who is responsible for what. So first and foremost, the Minister of Environment should be struck from the list of witnesses that are required in this motion because they don't have that him nor his office has anything to do with any of this. Secondly, I'd like to include two names in the text of the motion. Firstly, the Auditor General herself and the RCMP Commissioner because I believe that both have important testimony to provide on Parliament's continued study of STDC including their grave concerns on the CPC June 10th motion, which is compromising their independence, as they have stated. And now, an article in the National Post from a few days ago dug more into this, with a, a former senior parliamentary counsel for the House of Commons quoted, saying that the conservative motion is both completely unprecedented and a likely abuse a likely abuse of Parliament's powers. Academics have already raised concerns, saying that by demanding the documents with the sole purpose of passing them on to the RCMP, the House of Commons is overstepping its bounds, and these actions raise a number of constitutional issues here. Our job as parliamentarians is to ensure proper oversight and accountability of public funds. It is not to act outside of the bounds of Parliament, Mr. Chair. I think it's incumbent on us to hear from both of, uh, of these witnesses, the AG and the RCMP Commissioner, uh, that have brought these real concerns regarding Parliament's actions on SDTC. Any uh, extensions of this uh, SDTC study should, uh, should include testimony uh, from both of those witnesses in, uh, in my view. So um, I, I would then propose that we remove um, Minister Gilbo from the list and that we add the Auditor General and the RCMP Commissioner to the list of witnesses for a more wholesome testimony as to what exactly is going on here. And Chair, it's, um, it's time for us to start doing the right thing amongst all parliamentarians uh, at this table. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. So I have... Um, amendments to the to the motion. 
um, which we will deal with here and now. There's, of course, a speaking list to the main motion, but let's uh, let's deal with Ms. Khalid's uh, amendments. I think, Ms. Khalid, if you're if you're uh, if you're agreeable, uh, I'll I'll do them as kind of one, two, three, because I suspect you might have different shifting support. So I was going to do maybe a vote on the uh, striking the the minister. Okay. All right. So the the amendment is to strike. Uh, the Minister uh, of the Environment and, and Climate Change. A uh, point uh, of order, Chair. Uh, uh, go ahead, Mr. Digley. Thank you, Chair. I apologize for having to interrupt just before you read. Just to get clarity on the proposed amendment, if we can have that amendment sent to us. In addition, is it possible if I, if by unanimous consent, maybe we can get a compromise here to sustain the witnesses that were submitted by the Conservatives, including Minister Gilbo, in addition to adding the the other witnesses proposed by the Liberals. Um, I'd be happy to, to vote in consensus if we can just invite all of the witnesses and do away with the fact that we have to, we'd have to vote. Maybe I'm just, it's just a recommendation. Yeah, no, well, that, that's what I was trying to work through. So I think Ms. Khalid would like to present them as a package, which means, which, which could present a some amendment to the to the to the amendment, but what? Uh, chair. So just to address uh, the concern of the member, what I'm proposing, um, you know, specifically with respect to uh, the minister for environment, he has no responsibility in SDTC. Yeah. He has nothing to do with the file. It would be a waste of our committee resources for us to have him. We've already had Minister Champagne, and I'm sure Minister Champagne is yeah. is willing to come again. He, the person who is responsible for the file, so it just doesn't make yeah. sense for us to include a minister who has no authority over this file that we're talking about. Right, and you would like to present this. So your amendment to the motion is to remove four strikes to for Stephen Gilbo, Minister of the Environment and Climate Change, and then add uh, the Auditor General and the Commissioner of the RCMP. Uh, that is the uh, amendment. I had, first of all, I had Madame Tikla uh I uh, wanted to speak on it first, I believe, and then after that, I see Mr. Perkins. Um, I do have a list running on the side, which is Mr. Dejale, Mr. Brock, and Mr. Genuis. So I'm going to, to yeah, sure, but I, I'm going to keep that. So, um, gentlemen, if you can put your hand down, and if you want to put your, if you, or keep your hand up if you want to be on this am amendment to the motion list. Yeah, it's your point of order. I, I would like to be on both. But okay, I did, I that's did. fine. I think right at the beginning uh, regarding regarding the amendment um, issue. So uh, wherever I fit on the list. Mr. Dejale, you'd like to speak to the amendment as well? Amendment to the motion? Yeah, I, I would like to speak to the amendment just as a matter of reply. Right now, i just confirming. I'll come back to you. So, Madam Sikla Dinging, you have the floor first. Oh, of course. And I would say I agree that I don't think we're going to be able to gain anything very useful from speaking to Mr. Gilbo. And so I am in agreement with Ms. Kelly's amendments. Merci beaucoup. C'est thank you, Mr. Perkins. We have Mr. Perkins. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you put me back on the list for my sub amendments? No, we're going to resolve this topic, and then after that, you will be on the list. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on the amendment, uh, maybe I would start because there seems to be a little confusion because the Minister Champagne's name was mentioned. We still have an existing study motion. This is a supplement to it. On the existing study motion, it has uh, Francois Philippe Champagne, Minister of Industry, Simon Kennedy, the Deputy Minister. Uh, it has uh, Francis Bilodeau, the ADM at Innovation Science Technology. Uh, it has uh, uh, Paul Booth, the current acting chair, so the other ones are in addition that are on my motion. Um, and it has uh, Zaid Rahim, who is the, as you know, is the acting president. These are already on it, on that, and there's some people from PCO as well. Um, so th this list is in addition, not as a substitution for that previous motion on the existing study. And in that addition, and I have no issues with uh, the amendment to B, as I understand it. I'd like to see it just to make sure I understand what it is again. But uh, just by way of explanation on Minister Gibo, Minister Gibo indeed does have 
uh, quite a bit to do with this since he was the in-house lobbyist for 10 years before he was elected uh, for uh, the primary beneficiary of the Green Slush Fund and in his public declarations on his conflict of interest. He lists um, Cycle Capital still as being a shareholder. He did not divest himself of the primary beneficiary of the Liberal Green Slush Fund when he became a minister. And uh, since he's become a minister, the value of Cycle Capital has tripled with the amount of money that's been going into it. So that's the rationale for it. I'm obviously uh, 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 would prefer to have him, but if the committee doesn't uh, feel that way, I guess we'll see that in the, in the amendment. And perhaps, I don't know, I probably can't ask a question. I just want a clarification. So uh, your, your, the suggestion is to add the RCMP in before it says Auditor General. Is that correct? Well, it's it's it, uh, it it is to oh, strike it's adding both of them. It's strike Gilbo, and then there'll be a new number. Oh, as additional witnesses. Yeah, so additional but witness auditor general there. of Canada, RCMP commissioner. You're right. Nope. So it was additional witnesses. I wasn't quite. Yeah. So quite. I. So we're yeah. only talking about the motion that you have presented yeah. today. Right. We're not talking about any other right. motions that are yeah. uh, that are have passed through this committee. But you were uh, adding before. them as additional witnesses, not. So I, I'm yes. adding two witnesses okay. uh, and removing one as okay. proposed. Okay. No, All right, thank Mr. You. Perkins, you are done. Um, uh, I've got Mr. Genuous and Mr. Desjardins, um, Ms. Khalid, and then and then Mr. Brock. This is all on the amendment with these three names. One we're removing, Gilbo. The other two we're adding. I am going to enforce. We speak to that amendment only. Mr. Genuous, you have the floor, please. Yeah, th thank you, Chair. I was flabbergasted by some of Ms. Khalid's opening comments. Uh, she described our inquiries in this regard as being like a fishing expedition. If this is like fishing, uh, it's like going to a barrel full of fish and grabbing fish out of it. Uh, it's it's evident that the the volume of corruption. Uh, there's there's no question that there were violations of basic norms around conflict of interest here. So uh, so so using idioms that suggest this is sort of speculative investigation uh, is is pretty outrageous and seems like the member is, is trying to deny some of the basic conclusions uh, of the Auditor General's uh, report. Uh, I did have a specific comment on the amendment. Uh, that is, Ms. Khalid seems to be taking issue uh, with uh, the motion that, um, yes, it was a conservative motion, but it was passed by a majority of the House of Commons in June regarding requesting documents. Uh, that motion used the uh, unfettered powers of the House of Commons uh, to send for documents. This is a, a clearly uh, well-established constitutional principle. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to, to talk about that motion, uh, the work that... Uh, that conservatives are doing with the support in this case of all opposition parties uh, to get to the bottom of the corruption we've seen in this government. Um, but look, I, I think um, I can offer a sub amendment uh, that will help us discuss this in a, in a more fruitful way. And that is uh, we should have the law clerk in because uh, the, the, the law clerk uh, works for, okay. for uh, us. Mr. Mr. Jenner, I'm going to stop you there. The same rule that I applied to Mr. St. You can make additions to the motion when that time comes. This is not the time. We're dealing with these three names right now. You're, you're, you're either in support or you can, you can propose a sub-amendment to strike one of the names if you, don't, if, yeah. if you disagree. But that, that is where we're at. Here's, you can, here's what I'm doing for, with a sub-amendment. I'm, I'm proposing a sub-amendment to replace the RCMP commissioner on that list with the law clerk. Uh, because the law clerk uh, is, it seems like the person, uh, uh, the mover of this amendment is actually uh, looking for. They're looking for someone who can answer questions about the appropriateness of, of uh, that June motion, about some of the uh, uh, procedural or constitutional issues associated with that request for documents. Um, uh, in, in the abstract, the RCMP commissioner may have, have an opinion on this, but uh, if this is a question of constitutional legal authority, uh, the, the appropriateness uh, of sending for these documents, the discretion that's available to the House, um, I mean, it, it was a decision of the House, not of this committee, I should, I should underline, but it does relate to work this committee is doing. So um, I think if, if members want to probe that issue, I, I, think, um, I, I think we can talk about it. Uh, and uh, so I just propose that sub-amendment that we replace the RCMP commissioner with the law clerk on this list. 
Okay, I'm starting a new speaking list for the sub-amendment to the amendment, which is to strike the RCMP commissioner and replace with the House of Commons law clerk. Are there speakers? Ms. Khalid, and then Mr. Dejan. Ms. Khalid, you have the floor first. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm quite perplexed, actually. I'm not sure why um, Mr. Janus feels that we should be removing the RCMP commissioner from this list. Uh, and, you know, of course, as we're having this discussion, we can add uh, witnesses and discuss the importance of these witnesses to the, the context of what exactly it is that we're, that we're studying. And, and to, be, to be clear, and I, I do want to quote um, this article that I had referred to earlier, um, where uh, it is said, quite simply, an RCMP investigation is the only way to fully... This is from... Um, sorry. Uh, according to letters tabled over the summer in the House of Commons and its Public Accounts Committee, the order created significant consternation with the Office of the Auditor General and the RCMP. The letters also reveal that neither the Office of the Auditor General nor the RCMP found evidence of criminal wrongdoing while looking into SDTC. On July 10th, um, Hogan wrote House of Commons clerk Eric Jans to inform him that she would not comply with the order because it would compromise her office's work. She also noted that if the RCMP wants her files, it can obtain a production order to obtain them legally. I am not able to respond to the order at this time, she wrote to Jans, arguing that the records she audited don't belong in her office but to the government. What I'm trying to say is, and I think um, Mr. Janus um, misunderstood uh, what uh, the point that I'm trying to get at here, Chair, is that the role of our committee is not to be a judiciary. It is not to dictate to the Auditor General, to the RCMP, how they should be conducting their work. The role of parliamentarians is not to dictate to these institutions that we have created to, cr to have that oversight. And by doing so, by continuing down this, uh, this road, we are abusing the power of Parliament. And that is not correct, that is not fair. And so my whole point of adding these two names, um, the Auditor General and the RCMP Commissioner, is to make sure that we have the full context of what exactly is happening here. I've never gone fishing, Chair. I've never had fish in a barrel, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Genuis probably hasn't either, uh, you know, based on his comments on lobsters, uh, the Atlantic Shore earlier. Um, but uh, but what, what we're trying to do here is be responsible, be reasonable, and if, if we are going down this path, then let's have the full context. And let's be effective and efficient in how we are conducting our business as parliamentarians. It makes no sense to invite a minister who has nothing to do with this file. It makes no sense to exclude somebody who has clearly, on the record, had so much to say uh, about exactly what it is that we're trying to do. Has had so much to say about a motion that was passed in Parliament that is a potential abuse of parliamentary powers to basically dictate to the RCMP how they should be doing their job, to basically dictate to the Auditor General how she should be doing her job. And if we want to continue down this path, then I think that both of those voices need to be at the table. And if Mr. Janus wants to add uh, an additional name, uh, name, including the law clerk, as he's just posed in his sub-amendment, then he should propose that as a separate amendment and add the name rather than replace a name. And the fact that he's trying to replace a name, I think, tells a complete story in and of itself. Why is he trying to replace this name? Why is he wanting the RCMP commissioner not to come to this committee, not to talk about the potential abuses of power that the conservatives are playing at here? So I, I, I really think that this should be a game of addition, not of subtraction, for sure. You know, I, I, I've, I've laid my points out very reasonably to say Minister Gilbo should not be invited here because he has nothing to do with the issue here. If it was an issue that involved him, sure. This issue does not involve him. 
Do we want the full context of exactly what is happening here? Yes. Then include the Auditor General, include the RCMP Commissioner, and sure, if Mr. Genuis wants to include the law clerk, sure. But why is he trying to replace the RCMP Commissioner? And I, I obviously do not support this sub-amendment, and I'm more than happy to support any additions that, that uh, Mr. Genuis has to propose to this list, but I will not be subtracting and as somebody who, uh, who has relevant contextual testimony to give to this committee about what exactly is happening in this instance when it is on record uh, what, where, where the RCMP investigation is and it's on record how these independent offices feel about this conservative motion and its implications to our democracy here in Canada and its overstepping and abuse of powers by certain parliamentarians. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. I'm returning now to Mr. Desjardins. This, again, is the sub-amendment to the amendment, which is, uh, and I'm going to, uh, again, I'm, I have three lists now. Mr. Desjardins, you're on the top of all three of them. So I'm going to, I'm going to corral you so your comments are on the sub-amendment, which is to remove the commissioner of the RCMP, RCMP and replace him with the House of Commons law clerk. Clerk, over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate using the word corral. As a former uh, cattle rancher, it really means a lot, and I can fully appreciate what you mean by trying to corral me. So I'll do my best to ensure that I can speak directly to the sub-amendments. Largely speaking, Mr. Chair, I do believe that we can find a consensus, and I think we often, me and you agree, of attempting to try to find a consensus and pathway forward. I find myself attempting to balance what is the need for true accountability, true responsiveness to a really serious concern of the operations of SDTC with partisan witch hunting. These are really tough for me to balance, and I think something that you struggle with as well, Chair. And so as a matter of a proposition to my colleagues, I think I agree under the first sub-amendment with Mr. Genuis. Um, but before I agree in full part to that, I would suggest that we'd rather, rather than go about the process of amendment, second amendment, sub-amendment, can we have an agreement to simply add any names, including the sustaining Minister Gilbo as the witness, and proceed with our meetings on these topics? I think it's obvious to me that there are questions that members of our committee have for every witness that's been put forward on this list, and they're going to they're gonna use those witnesses for whatever they're going to use them for, no matter what. And so I suggest that we just increase the list, be reasonable with each other, and I propose that under all these amendments, to collapse all three amendments, have a consensus of our committee, because Canadians really expect us to do work here. And I really want to get to the bottom of what is a very real issue that's been going on consecutively for, you know, forever. Um, these issues of procurement aren't just liberal ones. They're also conservative ones. I'm sure there's been instances provincially as well where even new Democrats or even block or, you know, block members have to deal with these issues as well. So I really suggest that we take a more serious approach to this, add as many witnesses that we deem appropriate for the further study of this report, including the minister, including the RCMP, including the law clerk, uh, and, and get get to a consensus on this. Um, that would be my proposition, Chair, and I think we can get there um, if we can try to avoid the, um, the, the obvious partisan back and forth that's sucking up committee time here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just summarize that, Mr. Dejale, because I think, I think you're, you're in the column of just additions, and you would like to see uh, Minister Gilbo remain, um, as well as the Auditor General, as well as the RCMP Commissioner, and you're agreeing with Mr. Genuis on the the law clerk. So, I have a speaking list, Ms. Khalid, so I'm going to have to come back to you. This is Mr. Genuis' sub-amendment, and he's actually up next, so maybe we'll see what he has to say about that proposition. Um, instead of swapping Mr. Genuis, you would agree to uh, have them both there. But it's, again, it's your sub amendment. It's over to you. Yeah, sure. I mean, in in, in the abstract, I I uh, my view of what's ideal hasn't hasn't changed in terms of who can shed the most light on the specific issue. But uh, um, but I think Mr. Desjardins is proposing a a good way forward in terms of finding consensus, which is to say. Um, addition of witnesses, not subtraction of, of witnesses. And if there are individuals that uh, particular 
particular members think are important to hear from, um, then, uh, um, you know, then, then, uh, uh, Others may be surprised to find that they have more to offer than, than they expected on the particular topic. Um, uh, my, my point on the RCMP commissioner was simply that if, if the goal is to talk about uh, the legal and constitutional issues around sending for documents, the law clerk is the, is the appropriate uh, person for that. Uh, and, um, but, you know, hey, if, if, if other people want to ask questions to the RCMP commissioner on, on various things... Um, but but I but I would say if if, if we're going to try to establish consensus on the principle that it's addition and not subtraction, we can't be selective about that, right? Uh, because uh, our view is that Mr. Gibo has some important uh, context uh, to add to this conversation. So uh, I guess the appropriate way of proceeding would be by uh, um, by unanimous consent or by agreement. If we can if we can agree that uh, Minister Gibo stays on the list and that we add the RCMP commissioner, the law clerk and the auditor general. Uh, and then we get back to the main motion so that, uh, um, uh, Miss Sinclair Gagné can propose up additional right. names and then others additional names. Then I, I think okay. that's a good way to proceed. If okay. To do that. Well, before there's a few steps to get there, you know, it's not quite that easy, but I do have Miss Yip and this, and then Miss Killian. So Miss Yip, you have the, uh, the floor. Mr. Dejali, I'm going to ask you to put your hand down, um, I, unless you want to speak again, but I think, I think you're covered. So, Ms. Shipp, you have the floor, please. And then, Miss, after that, Ms. Kelly. Um, well, with respect to uh, Mr. Desjardins, I, I feel that um, opening up to any names, just adding willy-nilly, um, I, I, I think that we just need to be conscious of our time here on the committee and the purpose of this committee. We've already um, been uh, looking at how many meetings of a ride can over 25 now meetings. And yet there's so much of the other reports that need to be addressed by the auditor general that we put so much work on the back bench on the, on the back burner. And we really need to get back to that because there is more to life than just a ride can. There are other issues that Canadians are, concerned about and issues that the Auditor General has raised. Um, so I do agree that uh, with the sub-amendment to have the Auditor General, the RCMP, the law clerk, um, as i like to support uh, Ms. Khalid, there is no point in having Minister Guibault come it's it's again we want to really be targeted and precise in our time of the witnesses that come so that this doesn't just drag on there has to be a whole purpose and um i do think that offering um minister champagne um is more relevant and uh that would be a better use of time thank you thank you um, I'm going to turn to Ms. Khalid. Then, Mr. Janice, I'm going to come back to you, um, and we're going to see if, if 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 you're willing to make a. In order for you to withdraw your motion, you'd have to seek UC. Otherwise, we vote on it. Um, but I'm going to hear Ms. Khalid first, and you, then you and I can talk. But I'm, I, I've got to go to Ms. Khalid next. She's been very patient. Ms. Ms. Khalid, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. You're very kind. I think you're trying to make up for ordering that butter chicken, but. Um, <laughs> Um, but I, look, I, I think that we should be precise and targeted if we're going to go down this path of this study. Um, as I said earlier, I would propose, Chair, that um, Mr. Genuis, if he feels so inclined, should withdraw his sub-amendment and perhaps add an amendment uh, uh, after we've uh, decided on, on mine uh, at, a, at a later time in this meeting. And, uh, and stop creating confusion because I, I would like to just vote on one thing at a time. I know um, uh, Ms. St. Claire de Gagné has, uh, has some witnesses that she wants to propose as well, and I'd like to hear what, uh, what those names are as well and, uh, and see how we, can, how we can be more productive uh, in this meeting rather than going back and forth and trying to scratch out names and adding more and scratch out more and adding more. It just doesn't, uh, doesn't make sense to me. So, Chair, if it's okay with you, I would, uh, would prefer that we stick with voting on the sub-amendment or Mr. Genuis can withdraw his sub-amendment and we can vote on my amendment and then move on to, to the proposal of uh, Ms. Inclair de Gagné. So there's a few steps. I mean, we would 
depending on what Mr. Genovese does, we would then return to your amendment to the motion. So, Mr. Genuous, um, I think you'll get where you want to go if you seek UC to dissolve your sub amendment. You will then have an opportunity later to propose the law clerk. Would you like to do that? Uh, yes, sir. Sure. I'd like to re retain the floor to speak uh, on the amendment uh, as well. But uh, hold hold on a second. Hold on. Um, well, okay. It, it won't work. Like you, you will get an opportunity again. I will add you. But I'm keeping multiple lists here. But I will add you, so you'll get an opportunity, and you will okay. have your your say. So, okay. so um, I'm looking for to request unanimous consent to withdraw the sub amendment. That's fine. I think we're getting to where I wanted to land. So. Okay. Uh, do I have agreement? Uh, for Mrs. Mr. Genuous's sub-amendment to uh, be withdraw and to be, okay. Good. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, now I'm going back to uh, the amendment, and I have a speaking list here already. Mr. Desjolais is at the top of it. This is Ms. Khalid's amendment to withdraw uh, and remove Mr. Gilbo, Minister Gilbo, and add the OAG and the RCMP commissioner. Um, I can almost predict what you're going to say, Mr. Desjardins. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And I feel it's probably not a surprise to you or members of our committee that I'd seek compromise on this. I think it's important that we probably keep all of these witnesses. I, if there are members who are proposing questions to the minister, the minister should be present to answer those questions, particularly as it relates to the transition of the file. The transition of it uh, uh, towards NRC, like we heard today, there's many questions that went unanswered. I think the minister whose directive uh, is responsible for that order of transition uh, is likely well informed on how to make that decision. In addition to the other names that were put forward by Ms. Uh, Khalid, I would also agree that those are important names to add to our list. Balancing with what Ms. Yip has said of trying to ensure that we have um, a scope that isn't broad, so broad that it creates a study that is impossible to to understand is also a concern I have. But largely said, that concern I think is mitigated by the fact that having these persons present is likely better than not having them testify at all for the purpose of understanding that scope. And so if this is the entire scope, and if these are all the names, then at least we know the breadth and limits of it. And so if these are the breadths and limits, and I think this is actually a pretty reasonable and, and productive conversation amongst all of us today because now we have a whole list we have like i don't know how many it is now a dozen names um that should give us brevity to schedule meetings with at least some of these on this topic which is i think a favorable outcome for you too mr chair and i think would be and is enticing to me as a member of this committee to see consensus on what i think is a serious issue um, if we have questions for witnesses and if members have witnesses to put forward let's ask them thank you very much Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Khalid, you're speaking again to your sub amendment. I can move you down if... If, if, if you if, can, Chair, yeah. move me down. I'd appreciate that. Yeah. I, I'd like to listen to what yeah. my colleagues have to say first before very I good. comment. Uh, Mr. Brock, you have the floor if you're still willing to speak. Otherwise, I'll go to Mr. Well, Pardon me? All right. Mr. Mr. Uh, Genuous, you have the floor. This is, this is Ms. Khalid's <laughs> amendment that adds both the RCMP and the Auditor General, and removes Minister Gilbo. Thank you. So, Mr. Desjardins, uh, I think, made a good suggestion, but didn't formalize it with uh, a sub-amendment, which I think he, he uh, which I think is, is procedurally required, if unless there's, you know, unless we want to proceed by UC, but it, it, it's maybe just cleaner to just remove the sub-amendment. Uh, so, the sub-amendment is to uncancel uh, Mr. Gilbo. Um and uh, I, I think I think he means to keep him on the list, but yes, so yeah, to 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 to, to yes. un uncancel, uh, to remove remove the proposed cancellation and to keep him on the list, so that uh, if the no, but this and the okay or, order, Mr. Jenner's no, this is this is this is in order. So we are debating Miss Khalid's sub amendment with the three individuals, and Mr. Sorry. Genuous uh, is it's is a making a sub amendment to to. I strike her suggestion that we remove Mr. Gilbo. Mr. Genuous wants to keep Mr. Gilbo. Yes. And, yes. and just to briefly motivate, I think that's that's consistent with with uh, uh, the consensus we want to establish, which is which is to say, uh, let's. Um, uh, we, as Mr. De Desjardins said, we're not we're not leaving a, a massive, unlimited, open ended. Uh, uh, 
the bucket of witnesses. We are we are defining witnesses in 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 the motion, but on the basis of uh, what uh, different uh, different parties see as being important. Um, Mr. Perkins already uh, gave some specific reasoning around Mr. Mr. Gibo, and um, I think. Uh, I think all parties will likely have have questions they want to ask him. So um, let's let's keep in the RCMP commissioner. Sure, let's keep in the um, uh, the uh, uh, auditor general. I think we'll have a chance to add the law clerk later. But let's also leave in Mr. Gibo. Thanks. All right, uh, Miss Khalid. I'm afraid you have the floor. So the the. Mr. January's sub amendment is to, is for consideration to keep Minister Gilbo on our list of witnesses. And Ms. Khalid, I have to ask you to speak to this. Uh, you're you're next. Yes. Then. Um, Chair, I don't really have uh, more to say as uh, as I have already made my points as to why Mr. Gilbo should not be uh, included in this um, uh, in this list, and I'm I'm prepared to go to a vote on the sub amendment at this time. All right, I do have another speaker. It's Mr. Brock. You have the floor. All right. Um, clerk, could you call a roll call on this? This is the sub-amendment. This will determine whether Mr. Minister Guilbeau remains um, as, a, as, a, as a witness that will be called or not. Um, so, if you vote in favor of the sub-amendment, Mr. Guilbeau will remain. If you vote Against the amendment, Mr. Gilbo will be struck as a witness. Is that clear? Not quite. I, I will allow people to raise questions, but voting yes means you would like Mr. Gilbo to appear. Voting no means he will not be called by this committee at this time. Clerk, call the roll call. Ms. Khalid. I vote against this, this sub amendment. Right. Ms. Bradford. I vote against the sub amendment. Mr. Baines. No. Mr. Wheeler. Against. Ms. Yip. No. Mr. Perkins. Four. Four. Mr. Brock. We. Mr. Genuous. Yes. Madame Saint Claude de Garnier. No. Mr. Desjardins. Uh, I am in favor, yes. Four yeas, six nays. Thank you. The sub amendment is defeated. Uh, we now go back to the amendment, uh, which is effectively now to add the OAG and the RCMP. Is there debate on that, or could I call a vote? Clerk, could you call uh, a vote? So if you vote yes, you are voting to for us to invite the OAG and the RCMP commissioner. And if you vote against, you are voting to not have them appear at this time. And Mr. Gibo will be, as part of this amendment, we effectively voted on that, uh, will, will not be appearing. Yeah, so just a point, point, point of order, Chair. I mean, yes. if, if, if this amendment is defeated, then Mr. Gibo appears. And if this amendment is, or at least is invited to appear. Uh, that, so. that, that is a good clarification, yes. If the amendment is defeated... Uh, Mr. Gilbo, we go back to the original motion. Mr. Gilbo is on it. The Auditor General and the RCMP are not. Clerk, call the vote, please. Uh, Ms. Kelly. I vote in favor. Ms. Bradford. I vote in favor. Mr. Baines. Yes. Mr. Wheeler. Yes, and just so you know, it's pronounced Wheeler. I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Ms. Yip. Yes. Mr. Perkins. No. Mr. Brock. No. Mr. Genos. No. Madame Sinclair de Gagny. Oui. Mr. Desjardins. No. 
six yeas, four nays. Very good. Ms. Khalid's amendment to the motion is passed. So we're going to return to the motion in which I have a speaking list already. I'm going to clarify it, but I'm going to let you know what the speaking list is so you're, get, you're ready. It's Mr. Desjolais again, Mr. Brock, Mr. Genuis, and then Madame Segla de Gagné. Uh, Thank you the, very much. Oh, the, sorry, the sorry. amendment, and I'll just to summarize it, the amendment now, or the motion now uh, d does, does not include Mr. Gilbo, but does include the RCMP Commissioner and the, uh, the Auditor General. You have the floor, Mr. Desjolais. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I do agree just off the top with inviting the RCMP and um, the other witnesses mentioned. You said the law clerk and what was the, in the last one? But no, the, the law clerk has not been added yet. You can, you can move that, but it is, it is, the addition is the RCMP commissioner and the auditor general. I understand. Okay, well, I'm in full agreement with the RCMP and the Auditor General. And this, if, if Mr. Perkins, this is actually a question. We're on the original motion now, right? I can speak to the original motion? As amended, yes. As amended, of course. So, uh, Mr. Perkins, I do appreciate you putting this this together, this witness list, and I do appreciate your work on this file. And I'm often uh, considerate to the fact that um, you're a very reasonable parliamentarian to work with. So I very much appreciate your presence on this committee. My question is regarding the inclusion of the founder of Cycle Capital, um, Andre Lise Metot. Uh, just, just some just explanation as to your inclusion of that name. Is it because they fought, they, they're on their, they're on the list of conflict of interest persons? Uh, uh, I'm going to have to add, well, I'm going to seek UC for Mr. Perkins to answer Mr. Desjardins. It'd be brief. Do I have that agreement? Yes. It, it just, Mr. Desjardins had a question for Mr. Perkins as to why he added a witness. Um, the list is six deep. I'm, Mr. Perkins will be brief. If you don't mind, he'll, he'll answer Mr. Desjardins. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Perkins. Brief, you said, not me, you said. I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah, you know how tough that is for me. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Andre Lise Mateau is not only the founder of Cycle Capital, but she was a director uh, for five years of SDTC during the time and was a uh, specifically on the list, actually the one with the most conflicts on the list, according to the Auditor General. Back to you, Mr. Dijerle. Thank you very much, Mr. Perkins, for that. And, and I guess in consideration of that, would it be, because in the motion itself, this is just a matter of clarification, I'm sure we can get UC on it, to just include the fact that they're a former board member of STTC in addition to being the founder of Cycle Capital, just so there's consistency with the way the motion is worded. Because I think there's every other witness says, uh, like Stephen... Ka Kucha, former board member, Guy, former board member. There's a couple other instances where it says that. Would it be useful for the committee for clarity of our study to include the um, Miss Metso? Mitad. In addition Mitad? to her. Mitad, Mitad. sorry. Mitad. Mitad. As an as a, as addition to the amendment to have a former, to be included former board member of SDTC. I think that's, a, that's an important factor. Sure. Is that, is that agreeable with the committee? That's a that's a almost a stylistic. Yeah. No. That's it's it's basically just to add under under Elise method that the former board member S D T C just for consistency. It's it's just it's it's really housekeeping. Yeah. All right. I said that's that's, that's passed. That's fine. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Mm -hmm. Dijerle? Uh, nothing else. Thank you very much. Very good, Mr. Brock. You have the floor. Explanation. Mr. Brock, you have the floor. My, uh, my intervention um, had some, some certain points that I wanted to bring across has already been articulated, so I believe in efficiency, Chair, and I'm going to forfeit my round. Very good. Mr. Genuis, this is your opportunity for the law clerk, if you'd like. Over to you. Uh, Chair, uh, I will move that we add the law clerk uh, to, uh, to the witness list. Very good. I have a sub amendment. No, I have an amendment now to the motion as amended. Uh, is there any debate on adding the House Commons Law Clerk? Uh, just, uh, sure. Uh, any opposition? I'm going to call that passed. Someone can yell for a vote if you like. That is passed. All right. The Law Clerk has been added uh, as well. Madame Sinclair de Gagné, vous avez... Ms. Sinclair de Gagné, the floor is yours. Thank you. I'd like to add all the names that were found in the conflict of interest list from the AG. I'd also like to add, so 
any people who were involved in these conflict of interest. I'd like ev all names that were in the list. Judith Ataïd, Carl Landry, Alan McGregor, Ron Kudis, Jill Earthy, Wormold, and Aaron Mahoney. Is that seven people? Seven, yes. Uh, so we have an amendment from Madame Sikladinghe to add seven names. Would you like me to suspend to allow us time to distribute them to everyone? Yes, okay, I'm going to suspend for five minutes to give the analysts and the clerk. Um, they're just going to come as, 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 as names uh, so you can all consider it. And then I have a new speaking list. First, Ms. Khalid, and then uh, Ms. Dejali. But I'm, I'm going to come back. Just to clarify, are we asking um, for, for these seven people to appear as witnesses? I believe so. I'll come back to Ms. Okay. Ms. Degangi once the, once the list is back to you. About five minutes, I think. This meeting is suspended for five. La séance, not meet. I call this meeting back to order. We have a list of seven people submitted from Ms. Sinclair Degagné. It was sent out. Ms. Sinclair Degagné has the floor. After that, I have Mr. Desjardins. So the floor is yours. I don't have much to add other than the fact that in the list of 10 ineligible projects, Many of them are also in the conflict of interest list. An interesting fact. So in the end, they were ineligible but received funding. So I thought it would be interesting to hear from these witnesses and ask them questions about these identified conflict of interests. Thank you. Mr. Dejale, then I'll, I'll, I'll turn to another member after that. Mr. Dejale, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I do agree with the proposed amendment to invite the additional members who are found in conflict of interest uh, as identified uh, earlier as well. And I think it would be important that committee members um, see that. My, my only question, Chair, regarding this is the format of the meetings on this. And I think this is maybe a subject that under further reflection is something we'll deal with in subcommittee related to how these witnesses will come because I think it, there, there is advantage to having them come as uh, a group in addition to se several other witnesses because I, I do now see there's going to be a procedural issue of trying to invite all of these um, witnesses. It's not likely that all of them would attend at the same time, but I do think for the purpose of narrowing our study, um, we could ensure that the, the subsequent meetings on this topic are organized in such a way that we get the best kind of organization possible. And I think these witnesses in particular uh, come forward regarding the information on conflict of interest, which I think some other witnesses could also overlap with, including the AG. Oh, Mr. Dejale, uh, I will commit to having a subcommittee meeting the first week Parliament comes back so we can pick that up. Exactly. I think you make a good, a good point there. Um, and uh, I also heard that you, 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 I think you agree with Madame Sikladinghe's uh, amendment to the motion as amendment. Now I'm turning to Ms. Khalid. You have the floor. Uh, thanks, Chair. I, I wanted to be on the speaking list for the main motion. I support uh, Madame Sinclair de Gagné's uh, addition to, to the list of witnesses. Okay. Uh, let's call, we'll have a roll call vote for this. This is to add the seven names, even though I think there's broad agreement. I don't, I don't, I don't, hmm? Well, I think so. Well, that's why we have roll call. So why don't, why don't you just call the vote, Clerk? Just this is, this is to add the seven names. Can Madame Sikla Dengangé nous a proposé? Over to you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kelly, I vote in favor. Mr. Baines. Yes. Mr. Weiler. Support. Ms. Yip. Yes. Mr. Perkins. Yes. Mr. Brock. Yes. Mr. Genius. In favor. Madame saint claude Gagné. Oui. And Mr. Desjardins. Yes. All in favor. All right. We are now back to the motion as now twice amended, which is the... Oh, I didn't call Ms. 
Bradford. Oh, Madame, pardon, Madame Bradford. Oui. Oui, pardon. <laughs> Which is the list that Mr. Mr. Perkins presented less. We struck Minister Gilbo. We have added the law clerk and we've added the additional seven witnesses who are potentially in a conflict of interest. That is the motion. Any discussion on it? Or shall I call a vote? Uh, are we talking about the motion? Yes, as twice amended, yes. Um, Chair, I have one amendment to propose. Okay. <coughs> as, as I indicated earlier when I spoke to this motion before, um, the Auditor General has, uh, has just conducted a value for, for money audit on the SDTC. And, uh, and it has uh, just been tabled in Parliament just a few short months ago. Um, so perhaps I think it would be best to wait um, while the Auditor General comes before this committee. Uh, we can ask her the relevant questions um, on SDTC and, uh, and question her on this audit, uh, how much a performance audit would overlap with her current work, and if it would be more beneficial to wait until the new processes are fully in place before we request uh, or overstep, you know, in many ways, um, asking her to, to do something. I mean, it is really her prerogative. I think that it is probably better for us to come to a conclusion into what it is that we're doing here uh, and uh, and have uh, have her appear before the committee, answer the questions that uh, that we may have for her, and then and then go from there. And obviously, the committee uh, can decide to bring forward a motion at a later time um, once we have more information and perhaps with with better scope and uh, and precision as to how we proceed forward on this. So your uh, amendment. So basically, is to my amendment B. is to strike B. All right. So I have a motion to the amendment. Amendment. Pardon me. I have an I have a amendment to the motion twice amended to strike B. Uh, Mr. Perkins, I saw your hand go up. Uh, I assume you want the floor to discuss this. Yeah, just just to correct the record, the the report by the Auditor General is not a forensic audit. It's not a value for money audit. It was a modest governance audit. Uh, it only sampled 226 transactions, a small portion of the ones that were done in the period by the, the Auditor General's own admission, um, and there's sufficient evidence since the, govern the Auditor General's appearance, in addition to the list that was added of additional information. For example, the Auditor General had not categorized the 90, the value of the 90 uh, undeclared conflicts, which tuned, turned out to be over $250 million. Um, uh, or declared conflicts, I should say, not the undeclared ones. So uh, this committee is, and the Auditor General is not currently doing anything on SDTC, uh, and this committee is asking for something different than MP Khalid is suggesting, which is to delay, rag the puck, and hope that it all goes away. Uh, we're asking for a much more uh, traditional audit by the Auditor General of what the public would know as a forensic audit, but we're uh, in this motion, it's, um, it's called a, a value for money and performance audit. That's the Auditor General's current term. That is not what she did before. Uh, and so I would object vehemently to the government's attempt to stop the further investigation by the Auditor General of SDTC with this deletion from the motion. Thank you, Ms. Khalid. You have the floor. And just to reiterate, Ms. Khalid is not, in fact, the government, a yes, member of this I committee. Am not the government. I, I do occasionally refer to you as a government member, but you are here as a member. You have the floor, please. Thank you, Chair. And I, you know, very respectfully, I will uh, also vehemently disagree with uh, with, what, with what Mr. Perkins has said, um, because nothing that the Auditor General does is modest. Her office takes every performance audit very, very seriously. And if she felt that more work was necessary, she would conduct that appropriate audit herself. We don't need to dictate to anyone. And I think that if we are going down this path of inviting all of these witnesses and hearing from her as well in this committee, that we can pose those questions to her. I think that we should be very careful 
in in how we are conducting ourselves and and making sure that uh, we are bringing you know whatever issues to light that need to be raised and giving the auditor general the freedom to to basically do her work which she takes very very seriously and I, I really appreciate you know uh, being part of public accounts having seen all of her reports and the the amount of work that her and her office does I don't think we should be dictating uh, to her I think that we should uh, have her in the committee to listen to what uh, what she has to say answer everybody's questions listen to what all the witnesses have to say and then perhaps decide exactly how we want to proceed I think this is um, a little bit early in the game for us to to be dictating to anybody what to do thank you very much any other speakers? Uh, Clerk, I'm going to have you call the roll call. This is a vote to strike Part B. If you vote in favor, uh, the ask of the Auditor General to undertake a value for money audit will be removed from this motion. And if you vote no, it will remain in the motion. Over to you, Clerk. Ms. Bradford. We. Oui. Mr. Baines. Yes. Mr. Weiler. Yes. Ms. Yip. We. Oui. Mr. Perkins. Absolutely not. Mr. Brock. No. Mr. Genos. No. Madame Saint Claude Lagagne. No. Mr. Desjardins? No. Five, five. All right, and I will vote uh, the, the Part B will remain in the motion. I'm, <coughs> I'm now, pardon. <coughs> I'm, now <coughs> I'm now turning, hold on a sec. On the motion, which you table, which has now been twice amended, well, it's been amended more than that, uh, which has now had numerous names added to it, one struck. Over to you, please, for maybe closing remarks, although I will look for other speakers. Uh, I obviously will support the original motion, even though it has one glaring error of not having the shareholder, Minister Gibo on the list as the government decided that they wanted to protect him from accountability on this subject but I will be voting for the motion. I'm seeing no other speakers. Clerk, could you call the vote on the motion as has been amended? Ms. Kelly. I vote in favor, Chair. Ms. Bradford. In favor. Mr. Baines. Yes. Mr. Weiler. In favor. Ms. Yip. Yes. Mr. Perkins. Yes. Sorry? Mr. Perkins. I won't sigh as much, but yes. Exactly how we all feel inside. Mr. Brock. Yes. Mr. Genius. Yes. Madame Saint Claude Lagagne. Oui. And Mr. Desjardins. Yes. Ten yeses. Uh, that is passed. Thank you all very much.